Hey everyone, welcome to another session of James and Jay Dissects The Walking Dead. Today we're going to be talking about the first half of Season 4. Uh, so if you haven't watched that season yet, go ahead and turn this off now, watch it, and then come back to us so we don't spoil anything for you. <laughs> of course, you're watching this now and you haven't watched Season 4, uh, you're really behind the power curve. <laughs> yeah, you think you clicked on the wrong YouTube video if you haven't watched Season 4 yet, so... You know, and if you watched, under uh, the rock. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you watched season seven before watching season four, uh, I don't. Know what the hell is going on if you did that? I just yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we can't help <laughs> that. <laughs> You're all out of whack. Um, yep. All right, man. So how's everything going? Thing is good, man. A little bit of time off. Um, yep. But uh, you know, I've been getting bombarded with when we're coming back and a lot of questions. Uh, you know, for the show and, you know, asking about our schedule and um, we're going to keep doing this. And I told him, hey, look, man, we got to take we had to take a couple of weeks off, you know, uh, re-energize ourselves and uh, take care of life and and whatnot. And we're not going anywhere. We would let you know if we were going somewhere. It wouldn't just be an abrupt <laughs> stop. So um, we're back. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Um, uh, a little hiatus there. Uh, so it's adult life, jobs, stuff like that. Oh Jesus, yes, so, yes. babies, <laughs> babies. Yeah, we got. I mean, I caught a cold. Yeah. Um, so you know, can't can't be sniffling and clearing my throat the whole time. You know, and people people write comments that it's gross and disgusting. So I'm just, <laughs> yeah, no one, I think that it was best that, that I <laughs> <laughs> clear your throat the whole time and hawk loogies and all whatnot. I don't think we wanted to hear that. So you know. <laughs> We're back and healthy, and we're ready to go. Uh, pick up on our second uh, break. Um, so, uh, season four, Jay. Um, we are going to stick to the new form. We are going to stick to the the new format that we did at the end of uh, season seven. Um, I'm going to let Jay uh, uh, talk about the uh, charities that are going on and uh, do his spiel, and then we'll get into it. So, I'll let Jay take it away here, man. Yep, our charity is still American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Uh, if you guys can donate, please do. The link's down below on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you guys can donate, we understand that. Uh, what you can do, though, for us is just share our channel, tell people about it, subscribe, like the videos. Um, and I can't tell you guys outright to click on the ads, but I can tell you that all proceeds from those ads do go towards charity. So <laughs> do with that information as you will. There you go. Hint, hint. <laughs> <A little wink-winker. laughs> oh man but uh season four so it uh you know and before we even start the season i am going to get into one quick question somebody told me as soon as i got the ratings for season seven because we talked about it so much yes uh, as soon as i got the ratings for season seven the complete season i was going to review them with you so I, and they wanted me to start off from season one through seven mm -hmm. i don't think it's fair to uh you know, season one was the pilot season and only averaged 5.24 million uh, viewers per episode uh, with a uh, top out of 5.97 um, viewers in the finale. Season two was 6.91. It topped out at 8.99 for their finale. So as you see, the numbers were going up. Season three, which was their weakest season. And Jay and I have talked about that several times that yeah. if you're going to compare a season to any i mean any week season to a week season it would be season three um still was an improvement over the first two seasons which was 10.75 million uh they topped out their strongest episode was uh 12.42 million and that was their season finale um which i thought was one of the worst season finales in the series <laughs> yeah. um yeah. season four we're going to talk about that uh the first half today it was 13.34 million you started to see a jump in viewership. It had the, the, the highest uh, viewed episode um, of the series at the time was the season premiere, which we'll get into that. 16.11 million, and, and it ended the season strong with 15.68 million, and it averaged, again, 13.34, so it jumped up about 3 million viewers. 
season five, the highest rated episode, the highest viewed episode, seventeen point three zero for episode one. And then they, they, you know, they they had a couple of 15 million episodes here. It was the strongest season of the series uh, at 14.38 million viewers per episode. Season six surprisingly was less than season four, but hmm. in my opinion, was the strongest season. Um, I agree. It did, yeah. it did not have, and this is surprising, it did not have an episode over 15 million viewers, uh, whereas season five had one, two, uh three four episodes over 15 million they averaged just a little bit over 13 13.5 million i mean 13.15 million so they had three straight seasons of 13 million or more viewers per episode and then we hit season seven which had the second highest uh viewed episode in the series at 17.03 and one of the best season premieres um um of the series um in episode one and then it just it just nosedived. Um, it didn't hit over 12 million viewers. Um, it hit 12 million viewers the very next episode, and then again in the mid-season premiere. Other than that, it barely topped out over 11 million viewers. Averaged 11.35 million viewers, a drop off of almost 2 million viewers per episode. So if you see season three was 10.75 in a season that actually was on the upswing. Season seven really declined. Um, you could tell by the production, um, you could tell by the lulling episodes, you could tell by the fans' response to the cliffhanger. It was a perfect storm of shit. And, um, you know, while there was a lot of strong points in season seven, season seven at 11.35 million viewers per episode, they had reason. It was, it was justified as being a poor season. Um, it wasn't just, you know, people tuned out because of the cliffhanger. Um, people tuned out because it was very slow. I mean, it was a lot of, you know, I, I did, I I always describe it as a smiley face. Um, the two strong episodes and then just the, the drooping smile itself. Um, and it's the perfect way to describe the season. And again, you know, you you talk about a show that three straight years of 13 or 13 million or more viewers with several episodes over 15 million viewers. They only hit 15 million one time and they never recovered after that. Um, so you're looking at, the worst season finale um, since season season two, um, and you know four straight years of twelve million or more viewers at, on the season finale of a of a show, and then you know you look at eleven point three one. It just people just weren't coming back the way they did um, in previous years. Um, but you know they left us they left us uh, on on a, on a high note in my opinion. Um, you, you can't have good without bad and. Uh, you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of hope and promise in this season. Just a lot of emptiness. You know, um, unanswered questions. Hopefully, they'll answer those questions in season eight. Hope that answers your question. I mean, obviously, you could have looked on Wikipedia, but you know, I promised that I would go over it. And uh, you know, we are now heading to season get into season four, the first half. And uh, while it wasn't season three. You know, it wasn't as bad as season three, and it has some strong episodes. Again, this is this is one of my you know if you if you're gonna go in order of favorites to least favorites, this is down there. Um, and, and it had promise, but a lot of missed points here, man. A lot of missed opportunities, um, especially uh, with the conclusion of the you know the governor and Rick's uh, you know con- confrontation there. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely, I I, I really. I really think they could have did a lot better, um, you know, with that storyline. They had a lot of good points. Um, like we said, we're gonna we, we're gonna do a different template here, um, where we're not gonna review each episode. Uh, we will, you know, touch points on it. We're gonna talk about what we liked and disliked about each episode in the first half, um, and then of course we're gonna talk about uh, our obviously our favorite episodes uh, of the first half, and and. Uh, you know, point out some big, you know, big, big uh, moments in the show that actually happened. A lot of big moments happened in this season uh, that go, you know, might might fall under uh, in the cracks, I should say. But a um, lot of big moments and a uh, lot of big introductions of characters. So, you know, um, but anyways, uh, word vomit here. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna let my buddy Jay start off and uh, we're going to start off with episode one. 30 days without an incident. This is the uh, 
this is the first real time jump of this of the series. Um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm to take that back. This is the biggest time jump of the series. The first time jump was uh, season three, mm-hmm. when uh, it was about seven seven and a half months between the end of season two and season three. This actually was a no- actually this is second second biggest time jump. I'm sorry, this is about uh, five or six months after uh, the uh, governor. Uh, invaded the prison unsuccessfully and killed his whole uh, flock of idiots. Um, so, Jay, what did you think about this, you know, season premiere? I mean, I, I remember us watching. This was the last season we actually watched together um, was season three. So s- what were your expectations going into season four, first and, first and foremost, knowing that the governor was unsuccessful when he raided the prison and you know, I guess Glenn shot at them with a bunch of BB guns and they ran <laughs> away and then the governor killed everybody. So what did you think was going to happen here? Um, yeah, you know. I was, uh, you know, the season finale was, uh, it was pretty lame. Uh, that was where the worst they, yeah, they're just like, <laughs> uh, we got this group of people, but we want to do more of the governor somehow. So let's just yeah. kill them all and start yeah. back over from scratch. Yeah. Uh, so that was this wild card, you know, coming in this, like, well, governor only has his two friends now, his two lieutenants. You know, what's yes. going to happen? Shumpert um, and Martinez. Go ahead. Yep. And uh, so it was strange, you know. I was like, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. And they, they come up with a time jump, you know. Rick's getting along with everybody. He's out there farming. Yep. Um, Very important. More, yeah. There's a lot more people in the prison than before. And uh, they go on a little, little run. They kind of kick things off. Get, we'll get the, the pace going. And uh, immediately we lose somebody. Yeah. So, so and, uh, basically, this this uh, this was teased. Um, it wasn't a cliff. It wasn't a, as as cliffhangery as a uh, season six or even um, the season finale in in this season. Mm-hmm. But it was a cliffhanger nonetheless because you know the governor, you know, wasn't defeated. Um, he just rode off into the sunset after killing all his idiots. Um, but you know, coming back. You know, we got we got introduced to uh, Rick as a farmer, as Jay said. Um, got introduced to some big time characters that were kind of remixed. Uh, Bob Stuckey, uh, if you uh, if you read the comic books, Bob Stuckey is a uh, maybe a, 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 a white male that's in his forties, late forties, early fifties. Um, he has an alcohol problem. Um, I thought that they, you know, even though they ca- they, they had a great. Um, casting here um basically you know you're looking at one of my favorite you know characters lawrence gillard jr as bob stoogie he's one of my favorite characters he's a really good actor um i just think they dropped the ball with him a little bit here in in this season um but bob stoogie was introduced as sort of a drunk and you could see that his alcoholism got in his way you got introduced to uh you know you got introduced to patrick who was the catalyst of the next enemy uh, introduced and teased by, uh, by uh, uh, Kirkman all summer long after this, you know, yeah. terrible season finale in season three. Um, so we get into episode one, 30 days without an incident. It was, they're in the prison now, you know, you watched it. Basically the 30 days without an incident is, a, is something that you have in each job. It's a safety thing. You go 30 days without an incident, you know, you, you know, you, you list the days and, and obviously Beth is keeping track of the days and she gets to day 30 and, you know, shit hits the fan. So I like I actually like this premiere because it slowed things down um, and it, it, it made you believe that there was hope um, and that this way of life was going to, you know, be substantial. Yeah. And, these guys were gonna, you know, these survivors led by the new Rick, not the Rictator, but the the, you know, the people's the people's leader, yeah. um, Rick, and he 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 got his hands dirty. He started farming. He grew food for everybody. He went on runs. Um, I really like this. I like the episode with the pig in the beginning, with the walker with the bloody eyes. You know, I thought that this was great. I said, I said, I remember saying, hey, look. They talked about this new enemy. We tried to guess what it was. Um, the trailer showed a couple of things that made you think it was maybe a, a snowstorm. 
Um, yeah, the weather or something like that. Yeah, so they, they thought it was the weather, and it wasn't. You know, they tricked us. They used trickery there. Um, you knew the governor was going to come back. Um, the first episode was good. Uh, I I liked it. Um, it teased it teased uh, what was going to happen and it introduced us to Phineas and Ferb character Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> He's also in uh, Everybody Hates Chris too. He is, and guess yeah. who else is in Everybody Hates Chris? Yeah. Noah. Yeah. <laughs> You notice the Walking Dead recycle like they use a lot of characters that have had history with each other. Yeah. You notice that they they do that and they do it. Uh, the Wire, yeah, uh, I think Chad half the Wire cast yeah. is in the Walking Dead now. He's in the Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> you know, even um, even in uh, uh, Nurse Jackie, you had Denise and you had um, Father Gabriel were in Nurse Jackie. Um, just they recite they like to use uh uh characters that have history with each other which is pretty good and if anybody didn't know batman's parents was maggie and uh negan or jeffrey dean morgan and laurie cohen were batman's parents in um, one of the batman movie um so uh you know but anyways I, li- I like this episode jay um i know we talked about it over the summer and we were disappointed in the finale but i kind of like the direction they were going here yeah um, if anybody doesn't know, if you didn't watch it, like I said, we're not going to review the whole thing, but what had happened was the flu virus, <laughs> the influenza, uh, hit the prison. Um, and the first victim of in- influenza was actually a pig named Scarlet. Um, <laughs> and the second victim was, uh, Patrick and, uh, Patrick died in a shower. He reanimated and mm-hmm. shit hit the fan. Yeah. Um, very uh, good. Episode. Yeah, and the, I, I like the episode too because uh, you did lose, uh, you know, Beth's, you know, new boyfriend there, and it, yeah. re, re, uh, it put the zombies once again kind of front and center. But like, oh yeah, they are still deadly. They are still dangerous. They're not just there. You know, as a backdrop, right. which I, right. I don't think anyone really, I don't think anyone died in season seven of zombies. Yeah, um, and 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 Jay's absolutely right. You know, the zombies. This show is about the walking. It's. It's a zombie show, but I think that season seven failed because zombies weren't scary again. You know, once you once you take the fear out of the the walkers, now you're relying on a bunch of filler episodes and and, and characters fighting each other without fighting each other, and it just it becomes a soap opera. Yeah, and 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 it gets slow and draggy. So, so Jay hit that on the head. Um, you know, another like he said, Beth's boyfriend died. Uh, Bob Stuckey is responsible for that he they go on a scavenger hunt. Um, you know this this kid he's uh you know he's he's basically you know trying to you know he's trying to be friends with uh, Daryl and trying to figure out you know what Daryl did. His name is Luke, but what Daryl did um, prior to you know the turn, um, and that's revealed later on. We'll get into that. Um, he dies as, uh, Bob Stuckey is reaching for a bottle of alcohol, you know, and I think this is a drop moment in the show. They showed him as being alcoholic and all of a sudden he, he sobered up. I don't know what the hell happened. So, um, you know, he dies. (laughs) Yeah. He dies by a zombie attack because, you know, the noise, uh, brought upon zombies from the roof of the store they were scavenging. Um, you started to see a little bit of a Daryl Beth relationship here. Um, which was uh, influential in, throughout the this, this season. Um, you know, Herschel has a peg leg now. Uh, you know, he has a, <laughs> you know, he has a prosthetic leg. Um, and, you know, that was good because, you know, he lost his leg in, in season three. So they, they kind of like tied that together. Um, the Woodbury crew is, you know, the, the, the people from Woodbury have now come to the prison. Um, they're part, they're not, they're not entranced in the community of the prison. Uh, Rick sees, uh, a character, uh, Irish, Irish lady in the woods. Um, and you know, she basically, she's surviving by, uh, her, uh, beheaded boyfriend who is reanimated. <laughs> so her reanimated head of her boyfriend is there. So a lot of different things in this episode really caught your attention. It was like, a lot of action, you know, some, you know, action, storylines, drama, tension, suspense. 
everything was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a very good return and a change of pace from the terrible season three finale. I thought this was great. Um, the rest of the season, you know, it it, it kind of fizzled a little bit and picked up in places, but this was a good start. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, episode two, infected. The con- this is the continuation of uh, Patrick. Uh, being, uh, you know, reanimating. Uh, it shows Tyrese's love affair uh, with Karen. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, he's flirting with her, and he's, you know, he's flirting with her at the fence in, in the episode one. It shows, you know, their relationship, which is very important. Um, obviously, Patrick reanimates. And, and another thing that happened in the beginning of this episode, somebody's feeding rats to walkers in the beginning. A lot of different, you know, storylines are starting to develop. Um, you know, this was a great, uh, zombie attack in the prison. Obviously a Patrick turn and people don't know what's going on. He's going to attack a lot of the, you know, the survivors in the prison. I like this episode, a lot of action again. Um, and then a lot of, you know, suspension question, what the fuck happened here? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> so, don't think I can get over this one. And I, I like the, uh, the, the sickness route and that's, that's obviously not in the comic books. It's not, and I like I like when they do stuff like that, and I yeah. think that that was very creative. A couple of people that I know didn't like the sickness, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't like that that, that huh? chain of events. They yeah. didn't like the sickness, uh, you know, uh, story. Sure more but, people would die from sickness than probably humans, though, out there. I mean, dysentery you yourself, you know, yeah, dysentery infections, yeah. you know, it's very oh, yeah. drinking the yeah. bad water. Forget about yeah. it. You're get dehydrated. There's no exactly. IV drips. Nope. Yeah. Nope. And, uh, you know, antibiotics are few and far in between. You got to expect that people scavenge those early Mm -hmm. and whatever's left is expired. You don't have scientists creating new antibiotics. There's no assembly line here. And go back to uh, when Andrea was sick. If she didn't have a show and she would die, she can't get her own food. She can't. You can't scavenge. You can't run walkers at that point. Nope. You're weak you're and you're, you're feverish, you're done. You know, once infection takes over your body without any antibiotics to fight a bacteria infection, everybody should know this. You're just going to succumb to sepsis and all sorts of other dumb shit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can't, you have to expect some sort of sickness to, you know, show its ugly, ugly head in the survivor's life. I think they teased this in season three. In season four, they took it to a, a you know, they took it even further, a te- step further. And, um, yeah, I think they, I think they did a good job. You know, episode one, I you know I think it was great, and episode two, I think was great too. I think it was back to back, really fun episodes, and you know, it it got us back involved in the show. It was almost like this is why I hope season eight is so good, is because season three was so so you know unsatisfying that season four really drew us back in. It like it 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 pulled us back in. Yeah. To really love in the show, so that's why I have hope for season eight. I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here, but I think that we we talked about this. We talked about how you know, just like Jay just said, you know, the sickness was a great turn, and you know, Patrick, you know, being the catalyst here. Um, we again, this is this is this is we we didn't watch this episode together, these episodes together, but we would talk about them, and I think that we really liked them. I mean, it was it was. To me, it was exciting, man. I like this one too, Jay. What yeah. about? You? Oh, definitely. Uh, I just felt like more uh, emotionally attached to the characters too. You know, how yes. even the pigs. I felt bad. I felt more bad for the pigs dying than I did the characters in season seven. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, but they brilliantly attach you to these characters without making a storyline for each yeah. goddamn prisoner in the prison, which. I felt they did in season seven. They had too many storylines and they dug too deep into the characters where just a brief in- introduction to Luke, Beth's boyfriend, brief introduction to Patrick, mm-hmm. you know, and you basically got the Jeff Karen, you know, David, brief, 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 brief. And even Bob, it's just like little bits Bob, and pieces about it. Exactly. He's like, oh, he's an alcoholic. And then it's like, yeah. why is an alcoholic, you know? And the yeah. fans could put two and two together. You yeah. don't need a complete episode about Patrick, you know, uh, in his prison cell playing with Legos. We don't yeah. need a complete episode with that, you know? Yeah. The children, Lizzie, Mika, the other children that were involved that went to story time, you know, Carol's, 
Now she's changing into a survivor, as yeah, you can see. and that's awesome, too. I, I, that's this is why she makes that hard right yeah. turn to badass. Yeah, and I think it I think it ended... Season 3 was when she realized that she, she was a survivor. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, T-Dog saving her, I think that that was her death. When, when she was in the prison cell and Daryl found her, I think her past self died in that cell. And the new Carol was mm-hmm. born, Harden Carol. Um, in season three and, and season four took it to the next next level um, oh, yeah. but uh, you know at the end of the episode very brilliant Rick knew he had to get the zombies now again Jay said it the zombies became more of a threat mm-hmm. they're pushing into the gates you know you got internal struggle with, with this uh, this flu virus now you have the zombies breaking down the prison gates because they're, they're, they're uh, you know they're, they're congregating to, to separate sections of the fence and you know this was introduced by Carol in the last episode hey it's going to be a problem they keep gathering up like this and yeah. it became a problem instantly it didn't have to take seven episodes you know instantaneously it was like it's now a fucking problem and you have this fucking problem in the prison so you have two incredibly great you know you know you know enemies one is within and one is outside the wall and um you know how the survivors going to deal with this well the zombies basically are breaking uh, pushing into the fence you know and rick has a brilliant idea again he's always thinking on his feet he sacrifices the pigs it hurt him yeah. but for the greater good they're just pigs you know and jay you know and and they made you feel bad that they had to kill the pigs but rick saved his people you know luring the zombies away with the pigs so um very good episode um and it left you with a Another mystery, uh, Karen and David were, were killed, and, uh, you know, they, they contracted the flu virus. They were mysteriously killed and burned. So, <laughs> Yeah, and now, now all of a sudden it's like you have to worry about the zombies outside, you have to worry about the people inside. And yes, you got, now you have a murderer inside. And um, it was an unbelievable kind of, you know, twist here. And, you know, again, it, was, it left you on the edge of your seat saying, oh, shit, what the fuck is going on here? And it was a great, great episode um episode three picked it right back you know yep now you now you have one of glenn's near deaths you know glenn contracts the virus early in this episode um uh daryl tyrese bob stuckey and michonne uh venture out into the city to a veterinarian clinic and uh and they go and they go to get uh, antibiotics um, and antiviral medications. Um, this was important here um, because now at the prison you you have this, you know, you're quarantining uh, most of the survivors. Glenn has come down with the sickness. You know somebody is killing, you know, uh, some of the survivors in the prison. You have the zombies who are still, you know, congregating and gathering on the fence and breaking the fence down. You got somebody you have, out there feeding the zombies rats. You have you have all sorts of shit going on, and it's almost like the survivors. And, yeah, and then back ahead, governor is still out there somewhere. It, there you go, and yeah. you and, and this is all taking part in a couple of days. So you know, the first half of the season only took part in about three days, which was incredible how they did this. Um, but anyways, you know, the survivors on the road, they travel. Uh, Tyrese is very upset because somebody murdered his girlfriend and burned her. Um, you're starting to see him turn. This is the first time Tyrese, you know, loses control. Um, this is the first time we see Bob Stuckey with the alcohol problem. Um, this is further mentioning that the zombies have flus and, you know, they can affect you uh, just by getting blood on you. Um, very great moment. Um, on the road with these characters, Tyrese going ham uh, with his <laughs> hammer. Um, yep, that was so a that's a call out to the, to the comics there. Yeah, that was uh, brilliant. I think that was a great, you know, a back to back to back great episodes, in my opinion. Um, Even the uh, the fight between uh, Tyrese and, and Rick is, is a call that, out there to the That was comic. a shout out to the comic, even though Tyrese kicked his ass in the comic book. Uh, remember, Rick had one hand in the comic book when they fought. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the show. You know, he Rick had a little assist from Daryl, and Rick got the upper hand on him and really beat him up. And you know, Rick is starting to he's starting to lose control a little bit because shit is hitting the fan in every which direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's pulled back in by Herschel. So Herschel, 
I want people to take note that Herschel's becoming more of a voice of reason. And what did Jay and I always say? Whenever you start to show hope in, in humanity, your time is, you know, your time is uh, few and far in between. So, you know, Herschel started to step up as the MVP of the season um, little by little. And, you know, uh, as we say every every episode, mm -hmm. the more you do good, the the less your time is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it kind of sucks, man, but, you know, nice guys finish last. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it happens with women too, man. Nice guys always fucking finish last, man. Yeah. Come that shit sometimes, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, another great episode. Um, you know, they quarantine the survivors. Glenn is now. Keith's come down with the sickness. Sasha has come there. down with the sickness. Now, uh, who, what was the crazy girls? The little girls, crazy little girls Lizzie. 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 Now, was she actually sick or was she faking it? Uh, I believe that Lizzie was faking it. Me too. I, That's what I, I don't saying. think that she was truly sick. I mm -hmm. think that she just wanted to be around death. Yep. Um, we'll get into that more as uh, we get we we start to depict this uh, you know, dissect this season. But I don't think she was truly sick. I think that she was uh, playing sick to be around death and carnage. Um. And you started to see that when she, you know, she mentions a little bit about, you know, when she's trying to name the walkers and, and Carl tells her not to do that. And she's like, they're still people. And, you know, she's infatuated with the walkers and she disregards the living. So, yeah. you know, and that that's shown in the next episode. Um, you know, in this episode also, you get your first taste of sanctuary uh, when they're driving on the road. They hear a radio broadcast. Those who those who uh, arrive, survive. Ride, survive. Yeah. And uh, this makes them. This gives them the idea that there are survivors out there, and they also run into a mega herd. So it's like, you know, they they're learning that they're not the only ones left in this world, which is very important because, again, humans introducing humans in season two with Shane versus Rick. And then community against community with Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And now you're starting to learn that it's, the world is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, just just the hope that they actually hear another human being's voice. Obviously, the world is going to shit. So there's not radio broadcasts everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's one thing they say. So it's a local broadcast. So, yeah. you know, it's close. Yes. But it's just a little outside of the reception. Make, so. Yeah. And, and, you know, Sanctuary, those who arrived survived. That was key here. Uh, and, and it spilled into episode four, which was a continuation, the same day continuation. Now the survivors have found the medicine. Um, they're on the road. They, they find the medicine. Bob Stuckey is, you know, he's shown stealing a, a fifth of, of alcohol. And, um, you know, Daryl has a moment where he tells him, you're putting people at risk. You yeah. got somebody killed. You know, if, if, if I smell this on your breath and, and before we get back, I'm going to kill you. It you starting to see out up there. Yeah, you're starting to see that Bob Stuckey is succumbing to his sickness here. Um, but back in the prison, again, I love this episode. This was, this episode was another good episode because it, 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 it took that group further. You know, it, it took that group further and it answered the question quickly of who killed Karen and David. You know, it took you back to Rick being a cop. Mm -hmm. And he had to use his his cop instinct, his investigation skills. It did what Jay said that Oceanside should have did. It showed you flashback moments of Rick's investigation. Rather mm -hmm. than if, if this was season seven, what would happen here was they would drag out the investigation the entire episode. Yeah. And then 16 episodes down the road, they would say, oh, well, this is the second part of that. You know, they did it brilliantly where they, they chopped it up. And they show Rick putting piece by piece together while they still had, you know, Daryl's group out on the road. So it was brilliantly done. They would have did the same thing here that they did. I mean, it's the same thing with Oceanside that they did here. I would have liked season seven better instantly. You understand? So yeah, there was yeah the pacing was just completely off. But when we get to that, because yeah. whenever we do get around to recapping some of that, yeah. but uh, yeah, this it was much more well done. It kept you more in the moment. I felt like yeah. everyone was moving 
they had different storylines, but everyone was moving in the same direction. Yes. You know, it wasn't like, all right, here's this, pause that, go over here now, and try to kind of bring everything back together, you know, five yeah. episodes down the line. It's, you know, here's like clips of these guys doing this. They're trying to save people. These ones are trying to get medicine. Yes. You know, this is going on. So. And it's all within a day. It's mm-hmm. not within yeah. weeks and, and mm-hmm. whatever and flashbacks. It's chopping it up. It's these events. The sequence of events is so fluid. And these first four episodes are so fluid. They introduced... Two more characters, Sam and his girlfriend, you know, when Rick and, you know, Rick takes Carol on a scavenging hunt, but this is Rick's way of, you know, Rick had, you know, Rick's way of saying, you know, he said in episode three, Carol, you kill Karen and David because he did his investigation. Now, episode four in difference, what Rick did here was they showed you how. And he took Carol with him because he didn't trust her at the prison. So Rick is taking Carol to go on a scavenging hunt. Carol, now a survivor, understands Rick is not... T- he's taking her because he doesn't trust her. And Carol starts to be ballsy with Rick and say, Hey, look, these people were a threat. I'm protecting the good of the... The, the greater good of the group. And this, this ideology is continued throughout the series. You know, Negan, to this point in Season 7, Negan's whole objective is the greater good of humanity you know so it's showing you little by little that these survivors are starting to understand it's bigger than just the prison group it's bigger than rick and and laurie it's 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 a bigger world the world is larger and carol gives you a hint at that um you know they run into sam carol after being abused wife sees that sam has his shoulders separated good moment there where she you know uh, attaches his shoulder uh, back into the socket. Um, I really great. like that actor too, by the way, uh, Robin North Taylor. He went on he, to play. He's uh, a great actor, and I like how they tied him back in. Yeah. We'll get to that yeah. later on as he well. And I'm playing uh, the Penguin. Yes, Gotham. So I'm glad. Yes. They... Um, and uh, you know, so this episode was good. Right. Ended, ended. You know, with uh, the group on their way back with the medicine. It ended with Rick leaving Carol in the community that they just scavenged told her that she's been uh you know uh, you basically been outcast from the prison because of what you did you can't have a murderer in there because rick is right if his son was sick would carol have killed carl you understand so when you're watching this you're not looking at rick saying you kill karen and david you're looking at rick saying you know glenn is sick or he you know he doesn't at this point you know he knows glenn is sick but yeah how far but, would she go how far would you go? Would you have killed Glenn? Would you have killed Carl, Judith? You know, what would you have done? You know, you're you're not thinking straight. You're not using common sense. There, there was a way to get around this, and Carol was looking at it as I have to stop this now. Um, so she's left in in the town, and uh, that ended four straight incredible episodes. And I tell you what, the music of season four may have been the best. Of this season three and season four music, mm-hmm. awesome. I yeah. mean, that that song when Rick is driving back, yeah, you know, they, they nailed that tone. You know, nailed. That, that's that's another thing. They surfing, really wrote all surfing, nailed it, and yeah. they, they, they it was br- it was brilliant, and and just his facial expression going with that song, brilliant. Now, uh, I just once again, uh, you know, with Sam's girlfriend there uh, dying. It, 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 Says, hey, zombies, they're they're deadly. They're a threat. Uh, they know? are. And I like how they did it, too, where it's like you yeah. saw like the crushed up fruit. You saw a blood trail. And then yep. behind the door creaked open a little bit, you can see the foot. And then down the way, you saw the body. And it's just like, well, shit. You know? Yeah. And it's not, like Jay said, starting to introduce zombies as a threat. Season three scaled away from it. Season two, they didn't really talk about it until the end of season two. Season three, they really went into the prison and they they whooped the ass. Uh, they really didn't have a problem with the the walkers except for uh, you know a couple of episodes in season three. Season four, they've been a threat every single episode, mm-hmm. and they get even more dangerous and see in episode five. This is Herschel's coming out party. Um, Scott Wilson, brilliant actor. <laughs> I uh, love this episode. This was one of my favorite episodes of the season. Yeah. Um, in interment, Scott William, Scott Wilson makes a great speech. Um, you know, 
you you choose the choice you make. It, you know, you choose to live. You choose to fight. You know, he yeah. he was brilliant. He was the catalyst to getting you know getting uh making tea for the sick. He he just he never stopped caring. He never stopped taking care of the ill. Um, yeah, it was, well, I forgot how exactly it goes, but it's like you go outside the walls, you risk your life. You know, stay yeah. inside, you breathe you air, you risk it. your life. Like what yep. matters is what you're risking it for. Yep. And, it's and, like, and that it. was his swan. That was his swan song. That was yeah. his speech of death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they gave you little hints, and a lot, a lot of Easter eggs. People don't realize what happened here. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Easter eggs was you know he was walking, um, you know he's walking amongst the dead when he left the prison, um, and then he's still walking amongst the dead inside of the prison. Um, he's the judge, jury, and executioner. Of the uh, you know the the people who are he's the judge jury and executioner of those who are you know passing away. That was actually the episode. That was the title of the episode where Dale died. Judge jury execute judge juror and executioner. Um, mm -hmm. He is that in the prison. He's trying to be hum as humane as possible when he's putting people down. It's the first time you know uh, he he really killed a human human being in this sense. Um, he's you know he's saving lives he's 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 playing you know he's he's basically playing russian roulette he's he's around people coughing blood in his face you know dr caleb's coughing blood in his face yeah. he has no regard you know he's no he's no disregard for himself getting sick you know he's all about the greater you know the greater cause he's yeah. trying to help people he saves glenn's life yeah he's, um, he's accepted that he's like, well, i'm in here uh yeah. they don't come back with the medicine to save these people then and I'll I'll die too with him then. Yeah, and and he basically said, you know, this is this is this is me saying goodbye in in, in all ways, and he, he basically said goodbye to his daughter, um, Maggie, um, even though she saved him. He basically said goodbye, and uh, you know, the group comes back at the end, but before they come back, Rick and Carl go on a machine gun tear because the the walkers <laughs> again, they break through the fence again, and. Yeah. You know, Rick comes back and tells Maggie, hey, look, Carol killed all the people. Go and help your dad. I'll take care of the fence. Carl finally gets his gun back. We forgot to touch point on that. They go on a zombie slow. I mean, this is a great episode. Five straight episodes. Awesome. They they, they knocked it dead. Um, and, and, it, and it just... Not only did they knock it dead, but they ended the episode... With that governor tune, and then, you know, showing him watching the prison. That yeah. was, I thought that that was incredible. Yeah, that was awesome. It's like, holy shit. And what's good about this <laughs> is uh, they wrapped up they wrapped up the sickness. Though. It's like they got the medicine. You know, all right, that story is closed. Or it isn't like, you know, well, Don't where's, where's about the medicine? Me. They're still out there, you know, yeah. finding it. Meanwhile, introduce the governor, introduce this. Which, which I had a problem with season seven. There, there's no uh, closure. There's, there's yeah. nothing. Um, for this one is, it's like this storyline is now. It might, you know, so it had repercussions going to carry over, obviously. But we know now that you know this problem has been solved. Yes. Now, you have five straight good episodes. Now, season seven had one straight good episode. <laughs> <laughs> You can't have a perfect se uh, season six was as close as you were going to get to continuous great episode. Yeah, yeah. They real they went from having five of the great to me back to back to back to back to back five incredible episodes in a row to two episodes that made no fucking sense at all. I just so I, I think they're just trying to they had so much the governor you know they, they could have really taken this and really made this the first half of the season probably the best first half of all time yeah if they would have, if i think they should have did backstories not a future backstory of what happened to the governor after woodbury but they could have chopped it up like we said mm -hmm. they already did this with rick and carol they almost like lost sight of it could have chopped up what the governor was going through or tied it in to his past life and losing penny and they could have they could have been brilliant with it or they could have you know, combine these two episodes. Maybe one episode was a flashback of the governor, and maybe the second episode was the governor meeting Penny and them, and then Martinez 
all in one. They could have done that an hour and a half episode. Yeah, yeah shows evolution of how oh. we got to here, not like yes. between a comparison you know, six months ago to now. Yes. Yeah, and, and and you know, by them having the first one, they started it off okay. They try to tie it into the comic book a little bit because, uh, as we talked about before, um, the governor's name in the comic book is Philip Blake, but he he absorbed that name from his fallen brother Philip Blake. His, his the governor's name is Brian Blake. His brother Philip Blake Blake died, and Philip Blake protected him throughout the apocalypse. And when Philip Blake died, Brian Blake killed himself, you know, mentally and. Yeah. You know, he took absorbed his brother's he, persona as a strength from his brother. He took his brother's name mm -hmm. and uh, he lived his life. He lived, he continued his brother's life through his own. Um, so when the governor is dead, if you notice, he saw Brian uh, Harriet or whatever his name is, you know, Brian Harriet or whatever mm -hmm. the hell his name is. And it kind of was like paying homage to it. You know, you introduced to Tara and, and Lily and, you know, Tara and Lily and uh, uh, Megan, Megan, the little girl. And then the, the, the father, uh, this was in the novel, uh, sort of um, Tara's a big fat woman in the novel. Uh, Lily Chalmers, uh, the governor or Philip Blake actually rapes her. Old man Chalmers dies just almost the same way he dies in the show. Megan was actually a combination of Penny Blake and, you know, nobody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Megan was just a, the daughter of Lily in the comic book. Penny is obviously the daughter of Philip. There was no little girl related to the Chalmers. Um, so they kind of like mashed them together. Um, I thought that this was a waste of an episode. I, I think that they could have really knocked it dead by having the backstory of what happened in Woodbury, what happened to Penny. If they would have had an episode showing what happened to Penny here, that would have made the season even stronger. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, we, we get it. The governor's crazy. Yeah. You know, but like, why is he crazy? Don't, don't tell me, like, well, he went from crazy to sad to uh, try to be normal to crazy again. Uh, like, no, just, just show me the beginning. I, like, let me see. You know, I guess I would love to see how, he, you know, how close to the Chapter two, the novels of like him and his brother and everything like mm. that, or yeah. you know, how did Penny die? And not only that, they you can t you can deal with one episode like that. Yeah, but to drag it out, and this is what we didn't like about season seven, to make one episode that was you know just was a buzzkill for the season, but to drag it out into two episodes and reintroduce Martinez. Yep. And Martinez is now the leader of some trailer community and introduce, you know, the two brothers, Pete and uh, I forgot the other guy's name, uh, Pete and uh, I'll find it. We said it before, <laughs> you know, uh, Martinez, is, yeah, Pete and Mitch. Mitch. So, you know, to introduce them. You know, to introduce the tank, which, okay, you could have combined this episode. I didn't like either one of these episodes. Um, yeah, the main problem I had is you're, you're spending, you know, it's, it's not cost effective. You're spending two full episodes to introduce, reintroduce a bad guy and a whole new group of people just to kill them all off the next episode. It's, it, it made no know, sense. Spend um, that on other things. Then. Like, this, if you want to do a background on the governor, you should have done that, you know, back before you're about to kill him. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why am I getting invested in this character when he's just going to be you know, wiped off the map the next day? Yeah, and, and the way they killed off Martinez, I think they could have done better at that. I think that instantly maybe show, maybe they could have started off you know, the second episode you know, like choppy. I think they could have killed off Martinez a little bit better than what he did. I didn't like the way they killed Martinez. I thought it was stupid. Um... You know, Martinez was a brute. I know the governor was a big guy, but uh, Martinez had to have seen that coming. Um, it, it, you know, him getting drunk. This is a survivor. You know better than this. You know, it was almost like he went from being a hardened survivor to a complete idiot. Um, Mitch and Pete, you know, if somebody killed my brother, you know, I'm not going to side with them. 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Like, Especially. Oh, I get it. Okay. I'm not going to. And I don't. You can hold the gun to me. You're going to have to kill me, too. You can't just kill my family members and tell me I'm taking over and I'm going to kill you. You're going to have to literally kill me, too. Right then and there in the trailer. You're going to have to do it. Um, yeah. You know, anybody you can't just kill a stranger and be like, hey, I'm Come in charge on. now. I'm like. Killed Martinez, you now you killed my brother, and now I have to kiss your ass. Like, come on, it doesn't make any sense. No. Um, you know, and you know, Lily is starting to see the governor changing. You know, you almost had a death of Megan in this episode, all over the damn place. Um, a waste of an episode. These two episodes were complete buzzkills. These two episodes were what you saw in season seven, were just episodes that did not have to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just why <laughs> i i honestly would have taken the governor's backstory or a filler episode in this place maybe you know the, the you know maybe like daryl you know talking to you know maybe tyrese trying to investigate i would have taken a filler episode like that than what the hell we saw these two episodes were terrible it would have been like having a filler episode for karen right before yes. she got sick and died and it's like uh, okay yeah why are you wasting my time with this? You know, and know. like just like the the scavenger hunt, like the government went on with with the guys. Uh, you know, it's like, do we really need that? We now? don't need. You know? We don't need it. We'll forget skunk beer and for him to sit around and Martinez to tease him a little bit and him get a little bit aggravated. It was stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I, whatever. <laughs> yeah. and we, we still know who killed that group of people there or why they didn't hear the gunfire. Exactly. We is is drop. It was a drop ball. Uh, un unfinished uh, moments moments that didn't need to be. Um, it was a jump the shark with two episodes. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was what Jay didn't like about you know uh, he didn't like that garbage pail. Janus J- J- Jadis throwing Rick over the garbage pail. Jesus, yeah. He, this is this is this is Jay's uh, junkyard zombie with Spike. This is <laughs> these two episodes are Jay's uh, junkyard zombies with spikes. And it's no. too bad because no. I like David Morrissey as an actor. I think he did well in this. You know, he was actor. incredible actor. Yeah, they just they dropped the ball with these two episodes. Um, but anyways, where they drop the ball with two episodes, they come back and give possibly one of the greatest midseason finales of all time. Yes. Um, it might have been the best midseason finale of all time in this series. I think it was better than pretty much dead already. Even mm-hmm. though I liked the Sophia reveal, I think it was still better. I think it was better than the season one where Amy died. I think it was better than season six because they made that a cliffhanger. I definitely think it was better than season seven. I think it was better than season five with Beth, Beth dying in uh, the hospital. Uh, yeah. You know, I think it was definitely better than uh, uh, Daryl and Merle almost fighting in season three. This was the best mid-season finale of the series. Mm-hmm. Um, started off, Governor kidnaps uh, Mer- uh, Herschel and Michonne. You know, uh, very good moment here. He took the chess piece for one of those terrible back episodes. He drew, I mean, the little girl drew, Megan drew the eye patch on him. Yeah. It was the king. The governor took that because he wanted to be king. That was his main objective was to be the ruler of, um, he wanted to be what Negan was, you know, um, and, uh, his whole objective wasn't to find safety for his group. Um, his objective was to rule and, you know, he had the tank, he had the prisoners, he had everything in place and, you know, he told you what he was going to do in season three, another Easter egg here. When he came back to Woodbury, he told, um, Mitch, he, I mean, he told Milton, yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna be a peaceful, you know, exchange, yeah. and then we're gonna kill them anyways. Yeah, that's what he was going to do at this point. He's already killed everybody before in his group. He was gonna watch these people walk away, and then he was gonna shoot them as they were walking away. The governor does not want conflict. He wants to take care of groups. He showed you this several times. He's he's guerrilla warfare, man. He's gonna shoot you in the back. He's going to eliminate the threat immediately. So as soon as Rick would have agreed to let them take over the prison, as soon as they're walking away, kids and all, they would have shot him down. And, and 
just pre- to, to prevent them to come back and fight him. Governor's very, very methodically cynical, um, calculating. Um, this this was brilliant. I love this episode. Um, it almost told you, you know, uh, the group. It almost told you who, you know, t- Tyrese thought, you know, Tyrese doesn't know who's killed Karen and David. And Rick and Daryl are going to tell them. It had that element. And they didn't get to tell them. <laughs> yeah, it was right there. Right. The right you know, uh, you know, Glenn survived. And, you know, Maggie and him get split up. Yeah. Uh, um, then you got, uh, you know, Herschel, uh, Rick talking to the governor and almost talking him off the ledge and the governor snapping. You had the little girl Megan dying because it was a proof that the walkers are they're still a threat. It doesn't matter if you're, you're you know, you're, you're protected by the water. The walkers are a threat no matter what. Kill yeah, the little girl. I mean, God, this is horrible <laughs> parenting in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. It's terrible parenting it's like yeah okay they, they might not come from the water side but you know there's all the other directions they can come from not just oh. you know i mean obviously from the ground you can't really predict that but i mean behind oh. you yeah <laughs> you know it's you know it's just in the safe zone out there I, nice. I swear man if i had kids in zion apocalypse i'd have them on a leash tied to my head you have to you have yeah. to and 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 you know it just shows you again nowhere is safe um the governor completely flips his, you know, flips, flips shit. Um, you know, another powerful moment by Herschel saying to the governor, you know, he calls him the governor and the governor says, don't call me that. You know, and he says, well, you know, why would you threaten to kill somebody else's? If you had a daughter, why would you threaten to kill somebody else's? And the governor retorting and saying, because they aren't mine. It almost showed Herschel there was no saving this guy. And, um, you know, Herschel knew he was he was a goner um, at this point. Rick almost pulled the governor off the cliff, but the governor, it, he's just too far gone. And that was the name of the episode. He's too far gone. His whole objective was yeah. to take over. He doesn't want to be co-inhabitants with Rick. He wants to rule supreme. He's 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 a he's the governor. You know, this, he can't this have goes to back go- to the uh, the girl that Rick found in the woods. Yes. And that whole kind of uh, question, you know, can he come back from this? Yes. And Rick's the yes side, and Governor is the no no side. And uh, the Governor calls him a liar. And this is a comic book uh, moment here, except for it was, it was a little remixed. Um, the Governor killed Tyrese with the sword. Um, there was no he didn't capture Michonne at this point. The Governor mm-hmm. captured Michonne and Herschel, and he be- beheaded him. Uh, I still think that the order should have been different. I think it should have been, you know, Rick's speech, Governor standing there with the sword, kind of like thinking for a second, and then having Megan be carried over dead, and then shooting Megan in the head, and then coming over and be like, you know, that's lies. Like, you can't protect anybody in this world. And then chopping Herschel off, and then just kind of having to go like, right, right off the cliff now, where the governor's just saying, everyone must die, you know? I agree. And he had the famous comic book line, kill them all. Yeah. Uh, the tank, the tank crashes through. Incredible bloody scene here. Um, Herschel's beheaded. Lots yeah. of gunshots, action. Zombies are coming in. Um, you know, the survivors are fighting them. Now their home is decimated. Mm-hmm. Zombies have invaded the home. Easter egg here. The Irish girl that killed herself reappears. Yep. She walks in the prison. <laughs> um, you, you have the cliffhanger where you don't know what happened to Judith. The whole group is scattered. You got Rick and Carl alone. You got Michonne alone. You got Daryl. He, he's with Beth. They run away together. Tyrese is supposedly, you know, with Lizzie and Mika. We don't know what happened to Judith. Uh, we still don't know what happened to Kara at this moment. Uh, she's out there by herself somewhere at this moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Maggie, Sasha, and Bob. They're separated. They're taking the survivors who are sick on the bus away from the prison. You got Glenn in the prison. You got a whole shit storm of shit and, and nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, the governor and Rick get into this heated battle. Governor almost kills him. And of course, Michonne, she said at the beginning of the episode, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take my sword and then Herschel cuts her off. She actually does what she, she says she would do. And then, of course, as the governor's bleeding out, Lily, Lily Chalmers, after seeing the governor put his 
you know, her daughter down, she puts him down. And, uh, you know, it was just a great, I mean, it was the greatest Miss season finale in the history of the show. And they, they wasted no expense at it. And it was written by Scott Gimple. And it was like, if you take those two episodes previous to it, if you had eight straight episodes like that, you're talking about a season that rivals six because that, that was a strong, the strongest first half of the season I've ever seen. It was just ridiculous. And, um, you know, to end it the way that they did with everybody scattered for the first time ever, all these people that have all congregated together and, and survived together for months. Yeah. Now separated and don't know where they are. Each other are. You know, that was that was incredible. I really enjoyed the first half of season four without those two episodes. Six out of the eight episodes I loved. And you know what else they did? They tied up all loose ends. Thank you. you. Know? And that's that's the thing that they <laughs> did not do at all in season seven. You know, like you can, you can see the trend like in uh, the other seasons where it's like it's the it's the, ha- the half seasons are almost uh container themselves, you know. Exactly. Um but I don't want to talk about seven too much, but that's what I really liked about this. We, you know, the sickness yeah. done, the governor's story done. done, and yes, you have like, well, you know, now they're all out on their own. But that, that's what you are going to look forward to. Yes, you know? and then you also have stories that you could look forward to, like where's Carol, who yeah. killed the who killed the rats on the fence. Yeah. Uh, Bob Stoogie now he's going to become sober. Uh, you had different stories that you could look forward to seeing now. Uh, Beth and Daryl's relationship. Uh, you know, uh, what's what, what, you know, where's, where's Judith, you know? Yeah. So you had a lot of things to still look forward to. It was just so brilliantly, brilliantly done that, um, you know, to come back the second half and we'll talk about it. It could, you you think it can only go up from here. Well, <laughs> we're going to get into that, you know, next week, um, Definitely gonna get into that next week, but before we do, favorite episode of the of the favorite, I'll say, I think the, the mid season finale would be our favorite episode. That's Top definitely up there. Uh, if, if not that one, um, inter, uh, internment with, uh, with with Herschel's episode there. I, I agree. Those I are the two favorite one. episodes of this of the season. Where I think you could, I think you could put a blindfold on and pick one through five and and really determine what you want. But I think the two strongest episodes are five and um eight. Um, and hands they down. had so much emotion in there. Like, like yeah. even rewatching everything, Kelsey and I still got like, choked up in parts. You know, yeah. it's just like we watched that season, you know, half a dozen times already by now. Yeah, but as rewatching it, we still get you know, it was so well done. It was. Um, two best episodes, worst episodes. Jay, go ahead. I'll let you take this one away. Um, <laughs> geez, I don't know which one to pick. Uh, either Live Bait or Dead Weight. Um. <laughs> It's I'm, just, I'm just doing too dead drawn weight. out, you know. I'm doing I'm doing dead weight. I think that that was the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. I I hated that episode. I don't care about Martinez and them after that point. It, it'd been better if Martinez and them rode away into the sunset, and the governor actually stumbled upon the group himself. Who cares? You know yeah, why? Right? Yeah. Why the hell did you have to bring Martinez back to kill him like that? I, I like Martinez. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, you didn't have to bring him back. You know to kill him. Like we get it, he left them there. That that would have been perfect. They they mm-hmm. left, you know. Um, those are the two weakest episodes, two strongest ones, and then the first four, give they were all incredible. Oh yeah, very, even just Rick and Carol out there in that, that little town. There, very good. That was, that was really good. That's that's the bottle filler episodes that you need in a season, and um, that was that, that was incredible. I love Melissa McBride as an actress. Andrew Lincoln is an incredible actor mm-hmm. to have them interacting together uh, really for the first time. You know, they had conflicts throughout the, you know, they had a lot of conflicts um, with one another. They had a conflict at the end of season two. Now, they had a conflict during season two when, um, you know, Rick Rick came back without Carol's daughter. Carol yeah. blamed him. And then they had conflict again. You know, when when Rick told everybody this is not a democracy, you know, Carol questioned him. She challenged yeah. him. And then even in the beginning of season three, Carol's still like, you know, this guy, I don't really, I, you know, Shane couldn't have got him this far. But 
you know, she shot at him by accident and she didn't even care. You know, she said, I'm sorry. You know, she shot at him, almost shot him. So they had a lot of moments where they, they had unresolved, you know, issues. Yeah. And this was almost like them forcing themselves to resolve this final issue. And it was Rick's turn to finally have an issue with Carol. So, you know, you've seen Carol get mad at Rick and blame him for things. And then you seen the reversal. So it was brilliantly done. And, and they, those two act is almost like the tension was boiling up between the two of them. And, it not, you know, and it would Rick uh, ostracizing her from, you know, saying, hey, look, you're, you're done. You know, you you're crazy. Yeah. You know, so and that also was, it shows like how far she's growing too. where, you know, if this was season, you know, one two, Carol or two. Yeah, Carol, she would die. Yeah. You'd be like, I can't send out her by herself because she's going to die. Yeah, you and know, and, you know just just the fact that he he mm. called her a survivor is is you know that, that showed how far she comes. Just like Jay said, just you never would leave Carol out there by herself. I mean, yeah, right. Carol. It, imagine if Carol was who she was now, and Sophia was lost. Carol would have ran after Sophia herself. <laughs> Carol yeah. would take out the herd of zombies, but like, don't worry. She would have. I got this. And she killed about seven zombies with a stop sign without breaking a sweat in season seven. She don't care. <laughs> That's because the pair of the skulls are made of Play Doh now. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> things you hate about season seven, Jay. Let's uh, come on. <laughs> we don't have time for tonight, but maybe uh, <laughs> maybe another episode. All right, man. We got any questions from uh, some of the viewers? All right. So what I did here, uh, I told you last, I told you last break that yeah. you know we're gonna we're gonna keep it the questions to the the respective season that we're discussing. Yes. So you know we had questions from last time for season four. Mm -hmm. I saved them. We had, you know, I, I took the four best questions. Um, one of them we talked about earlier, but that was season seven. That doesn't count. Uh, another question we I answered already was our two favorite episodes, two least favorite episodes. So that 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 takes away one question. That was a great question. We answered it. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next three questions. Don't don't shoot the messenger. That's just this is how we just gonna keep it, so we don't have a three hour show. Because there were there, I had about nine questions that I can choose from. <laughs> uh, and we could talk about this for for hours and ends. You and can. Actually, just to bring it back. Uh, our favorite episodes there were right? in uh with uh music again that you mentioned earlier that that ending song there with Herschel. Yes. Oh man, that was that was spot on. I don't know who found that for that episode, but give that. Guy That's a on my Ghost playlist, Star, man. man. Go on, go That's on the it. website <laughs> echoes echo I studios dot com and you'll see James's playlist. That's up there. Yep. That's up there. You know, um, and and just last pale light in the west. That's a great, great song because it's it's it, it describes, you know, what's what the governor was going through. And I, when I first saw that, I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought that that montage was great, but they dropped the ball with it. But yeah, yeah. Th you know, you got a great got great music, um, and you had a, a great five episodes. So you know, intermit mm -hmm. and too far gone, and then we didn't like those uh, two filler episodes, uh, two governor episodes, I should say. So. Um, the next question is a good one. And I'm, I was trying to get it on my phone, but I got to actually read it again. Um, this, is, this is a really good one. How did, who is David? And how did they know that David had died along with uh, Karen? David, um, in, in the first part, the first episode of season four, when Karen is killing zombies on a fence, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's the guy that said, "Take that." So you know he killed a he killed a zombie he killed a walker on a fence, and he steps back and says, "Take that." The Walking Dead will not show you random people for no reason. Um, they will just name them, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he also had an apron on him, just like Karen did. Uh, when he died, he still had his uh. Uh, attire on as if he was killing walkers on the fence how did Car carol kill karen and david well she stabbed karen in the back of the head with her knuckle knife 
and then she dragged her out of the cell and she burned her. So you have to uh, assume that she did the same thing with David. These two characters were very sick. Um, they didn't have a lot of strength. Carol was, you know, she had already showed you it was it was a, you know, a glimpse of what she did with Lizzie and Mika's father. She saw that he was, you know, she saw that he was bitten on the back of his neck mm -hmm. and uh, she killed him in mercy. It almost showed you how she killed Karen and David in mercy. So, you know, the Walking Dead will give you ways that, you know, unseen ways that things happen in other ways during the show. So, you know, you have to put two and two together. It's a puzzle. And, you know, Karen already, uh, Carol already showed you. And then Rick having a little flashback, he showed you how she killed Karen. That's how she killed David, too. Um, so, you know, look back on it. The guy that kills the walker, he stabs him in the, in the front of the forehead. And he said, take that. And, um, you know, that's David. So uh, another one here was Bob's was the, we don't we don't know the answer to this one, but we're gonna give it our best shot. What happened? This this actually is this actually is told later on in the season, but we can go over it now. What happened with Bob? Where did Bob Stuckey come from, and where did he come from in the comic book? So the relationship between Bob Stuckey, um, Bob Stuckey in the comic book was an army man. Um, he said uh, late forties, early fifties, white male, army man. He was in a tent. Um, Lily call. Um, and uh, he basically, you know, he was the medic and he had an alcohol problem. Um, whenever he went scavenging, he would always bring back bottles of hooch. Um, his alcoholism, you know, increased as the story went on up until the point where the governor was mutilated by Michonne. Um, he had to sober up quickly in order to save the governor's life because Michonne had, you know, decimated him. She chopped off his arm, castrated him, uh, scooped out his eyeball. Yeah. Uh, and they had uh, another doctor, uh, but that Dr. Doctor, Stevens, he died. Yeah. Yep. He uh, um, took off earlier uh, to run away with the Rick uh, and then game, but uh, he didn't yeah. make it. Like, he really made it over the fence line and then he got bit. He got bit and died. Uh, yeah, so, so he's down. So that's why once the governor was uh, all torn apart, they went downstairs. I think he was outside. He was outside drunk. Drunk, yeah. And they're just like, uh, Slap him up. you, yep. yeah. Get yep. your ass Bruce. together. Get up here. Yeah. Um, and um, Gabe and Bruce, you know, they, they both, they beat him up and brought him upstairs and said, hey, you, you know, he's, he's always defended you. You yep. got to save his life. Yep. And uh, right he, back. he brought him back. Pay the bill, right? Yep. Got to pay that. Perfect. And that was a great. You know what? That was that was in reference to uh, the comic books. So that's mm -hmm. later on. That's in season five, and we'll talk about that. But uh, that was a great. Jay's on point, man. You yeah. Don't sleep on Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I know a thing or two. <laughs> got the knowledge, man. <laughs> it hit you with that knowledge. <laughs> um, but um, so that was Bob Stuckey in the comic mm -hmm. books. Um, he is dead in the comics at this point. Um, it's a side story. He's not part of the actual comic books. He's part of the novels. Yeah. You need to read the novels, people. The novels are great. They tie in, you know, the governor's story and Lily Call's story. And eventually, I hope that they tie it together, and, you know, with the, the comic book universe. Um, continue it. Um, and they have uh, audiobooks, too, out there. Yes. Like, uh, not everyone has uh, time to read. But, uh, you know, working, just throwing a pair of headphones and listening to those. They're, they're really good. They are. They're, they're awesome. incredible. Um Bob Stuckey in the show, African American, late twenties, early thirties, maybe mid thirties, also an alcoholic. What happened with him? We'll talk about this in the next half. He was part of two groups. Neither group survived. Um, he was by himself. He was just happy to be part of a group. He still had, you know, he he he, he turned to alcohol, you know, to uh, relish his demons, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But he was part of two two groups, and none of them survived. He uh, was found by uh, Daryl and Glenn. We'll talk about that next 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 half. How does they how do they tie in with each other since one is black and one is white? Bob Stuckey was also an army. He was also a medic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it showed that when he when he's talking about the doses of medication and he tells Daryl, you know, he pronunciates the medicine that Daryl is looking at. 
Um, so he is a medic as well. Um, he's an alcoholic. Uh, you know, other than that, that's where it ends. <laughs> yeah. Different characters. Um, both jolly, but I think Bob Stuckey in, in the show is a little bit more docile. Um, Bob Stuckey in, in the comic book is, you know, more of a people, you know, they're both people persons, but one is kind of isolated. The other one is, you know, more jovial. Um, so that's where the the connection ends there. Uh, you know, if you keep watching the show, you know that he's not long for the world either. We'll get into that in season five. Um, hope that answers your question. That's the comparison there. There's only a few and we named them. That was a good question because, again, if you don't, you know, we have to take it as not only if you don't read the comic book, a lot of people don't read the novels. So yeah. uh, this question was some, from somebody who read the comic book and and didn't realize that Bob Stuckey was part of the comic book world. He was. He was part of the novel. So that's mm. where he came from. That's why you have to read the novels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was messing out. There was a lot of, yeah. like I said, I mean, without the novels, the governor is just a sh shell of a, of a character. You know, yes. the novel, it's, it's everything, the backstory behind everything. Um, Correct. Uh, another question here. Um, very, very good question. Um, I got I to gotta word this right. Okay. The governor killed Pete. And placed him in the pond. What was the significance of this? That's that's the deep question. Um, the governor had he had aquari an aquarium of fish tanks with heads in them in Woodbury, and he used the fish tanks with the heads in them to prepare him mentally for the horrors of the world. He says this in the show, and he says this in the comic books. The reason why he stares at the heads is to 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 basically null of like make him null and just you know make him just completely just emotionless to you know zombies and killing zombies and seeing that they used to be people and that now they are zombies and you know his quote is you kill or you die or you die and you kill and and you know he lives this so when he kills Pete. He doesn't allow he doesn't stab him in the head because again he takes the lake or the pond which is already told to him that there's nothing living in the pond. It was like a foretelling. Pete said to him, the pond is dead. There's nothing living in it. So he takes this and he puts Pete in the pond with a chain around his foot and he stares at him. Because he has to get ready for war. He has to, you know, he has to nullify himself. He has to say to himself, hey, look, I have to, I have to get myself mentally prepared here. Yeah. Like I, I have to, I have to stare at this thing that was once a person that I killed and now is a walker. I can't be scared of them. I have to get thick skin. And this was his fish tank on a massive level because the next part of his, you know, his agenda is is to take over the prison and it, it's the biggest you know the biggest war of his life um whereas the fish tanks were s s smaller uh conquest the the big pond with zombie pete is a huge you know a huge victory and a step to a larger war so the correlation there is the pond is the fish tank and Pete is all you really saw was his head in his hands. Pete was the zombie head in the fish tank. So, um, yeah, that's, sometimes uh, you have to stare death in his face, you know, the you do. world sensor, you know, uh, desensitize yeah. himself. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, he definitely did that. And, uh, you know, after that, that's when he, you know, made the, that's when he went to the prison and uh, he kidnapped her show and Michonne. So, that was a good question. Um, deep question, uh, but again, easily answered because um, we're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more for it, sure. <laughs> it's, all right. So, this is a question for Jay. It's a surprise for him. This is a question for Jay, you know. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which, <laughs> well, we already know the answer to this, but I guess this is just to rib Jay. What season is worse? <laughs> season four or season seven? Jay? <laughs> they don't even compare. Uh, yeah. uh, hands down, seven. Uh, uh, I'd venture to say uh, seven is below three now. Uh, all right. But, you know, not, not, yeah. Four is good. Uh, and it's one of these things where going back rewatching it, where you don't get the time delay in between weeks. Um, where I'm sure if I was watch you know episode six and seven with a week in between, I'd be like, come on, man, you know, let's get back to, you know, where we're going. I don't need this, this segue over here. But watching them straight through, uh, I was I was, I was a little more, uh, I guess not I guess not as much as or not as angry or frustrated to see those filler episodes about the Gopher. It was like, okay, you know, I know the character. I'll get to know him a little bit better now again, and I know it's kind of coming up. So I. I I enjoyed it a little bit better the second or you know fifth time through or whatever. This um, that was that was the newest question for you, Jay. That was uh, this afternoon when I talked about it. And I said that <laughs> you know there were a couple of episodes that I know you would drive you crazy that reminded you of season. I just I know you know because yeah. we talk all the time about these episodes and the person said you know what was worse you know season four season seven the two episodes that you hated in season four or season seven and i said it's gonna be an easy answer <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. So without, I, I without a doubt without a doubt <laughs> that, you got your answer thank you, you know, I, I think i'd take a random episode of season four over the entire season seven is they're just they're just so much better you know you, you, i don't know you know, I don't know what man, happened in season seven. It's just something was off, and hopefully they, they get their shit together. You know, I I told my dogs today. You know, I brushed his teeth. <laughs> I said to them, you know, your breath smell like butt trash. And uh, I, you know, I make up a lot of sayings and stuff. But uh, season season seven and these two episodes in season four, they they were just like butt trash. They were yeah, horrible. Yeah. So you know, um, it. You know, I love the show. But you got to be honest and you got to, you know, comparison to the great seasons. The first half of season four was incredible. You know, we'll get into the second half next week. Um, and you're going to see it. You know, you're going to see a difference. <laughs> Not yeah. completely bad, but it, it took away from the great first half. Um, you got to start strong. You got to finish strong. In my in my in my point, you got to build upon greatness. Um, can't and, yeah, and uh, like we can tell is the good episodes are the ones that are going in the same direction as the other episodes. Yes, we have these sad episodes that are just like, what are we doing? We're just this has nothing to do with anybody else or or, or where I thought the storyline is going. What's the point here? And then it's like, is this a different show now? Or, you know, I just felt it feels too disconnected. Yes, so, and and the big thing here. Um, that last question, it was it was strategically placed because, you know, I had a conversation about the second half of season four already yeah. with this person, yeah. and uh, you know, I just I narrowed it down to two. But when you when you look at the second half of season four, when we get into the next week, you'll understand why I asked Jay this question. And uh, more, you know, we might have I might make a segment. What episodes drive Jay crazy? You know, we're gonna just look. <laughs> Because, At what point did Jay just lose his mind? Like I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're, we we might do something fun like that too. I might have Jay, uh, you know, put his put put his thinking cap on and, and try to get us a list of episodes that absolutely drive him crazy. And it's gonna start next week. It already started this week. I think you're gonna add a couple more for next week. But we're gonna save that for you. We answered the four questions, reviewed, gave you the schedule, gave you the charities. We're back. Um, yep. yep. So we're gonna do uh, yep. Uh, re- next week review of second half of four, and then the following week first half of five, then the second half of five. And there's a surprise. Then Here it comes. Then we're gonna do uh, probably a top five of some sort. So uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. Movies, books, games. Um, obviously in the zombie genre, uh, mm-hmm. or if you know we're, we're feeling uh, limited there, at least the horror genre. Yep. Um, and then. Before uh, the last week there of, of May, uh, we will be doing a recap of Fair the Walking Dead. 
There you go, people. You got your wish. I got a whole bunch of requests for that. We, mm-hmm. we talked about it, and instead of doing season six, uh, which we just got, you know, we we talked about already, kind of talked about season six, the finale. Uh, I think that I actually want to make season six more exclusive. So, uh, mm-hmm. I I would like to do more on season six because it was so great. Uh, Jay, another another brilliant idea that Jay had here was. To just give you these two seasons, give you the top five, and then like you said, you know, you want us to recap Fear and talk about Fear, well, you got your wish. So we're going to do James and Jay dissect Fear, The Walking Dead. and uh, I think we can knock out season one and two in there. Uh, I think it, we could throw that season one in the trash. I was going to say season <laughs> one. Just give me five minutes of just uh, swear words, and then uh, we'll jump into season two, but that never happened. Smelled like complete butt trash. That's what it's <laughs> It was horrible. It was. <laughs> it's like, you know, um, but it's going to be fun, man. Mm-hmm. Um, we, uh, you know, we're going to make it fun. Uh, this is where we're going to get real goofy because this is the only way to handle it. I mean, if you don't drink alcohol excessively and talk about <laughs> uh, Fear the Walking Dead, then uh, you have to be goofy and talk about Fear the Walking Dead. You cannot do this seriously. Um, if you do, you can get yourself angry and, and go to bed angry. So, we're going to be as goofy as possible, uh, uh, you know, vent to you guys about our dislikes about that horrible first season of Fear, yep. a better second season, and then it should it should gear us right there to the premiere. Um, we'll do that in one show because basically we're just going to, you know, light fire to that show and, and throw it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you know you guys can trust our honesty because <laughs> we're not being paid by anyone over at AMC. No. Uh, and and they, if they if they want to actually reach out and see this show, more power to them, man. Just have you know, just have you know, Lenny James, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You want to give my text? Guys. I got their numbers. Yeah, they, I know you do. They had, they had dinner over <laughs> here. That's why we've taken breaks because Jay's had dinner parties with the cast of The Walking Dead. He had Glenn come back and Abraham, and you know he just does all this shit just to just to rub it in. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and I was just so we can cover. I know last time we were talking about Sasha's role in the upcoming Star Trek um, series. So, she is not playing the captain. What? But the reason why is she's going to be the main character still. But they're going to tell from like a lower uh, officer rank than the captain, which they've never done before. So that's the, the little twist there. She's the main character, but because it's not going to be told from the captain's point of view. So she's going to be you know subordinate to the captain. She, she like probably a, will become a captain at some point in the, in the show's run. Um, so she wouldn't be like a Captain Kirk. She'd be almost like a Spock. Probably, yeah, something like yeah. that. All right. Um, or even just even like maybe a lower level one in there, just to kind of see, you know, how they react to a captain saying, "We're going to go to the Ramas planet and get people killed." You know, mm-hmm. where in the past, like, "Oh, he's a hero." Yeah, but so and so died. <laughs> you know. Um, so that, that, that may, that's pretty be pretty exciting. Um, so we'll see how that's gonna play out. So she is a main character, but she will not be the captain. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm assuming that at some point uh, the show's run. I'm banking on it going a few seasons. Uh, so just for the, just just be, just for nostalgia and and, gen, and just just for the nostalgic sake, it's gonna go a few seasons. It's almost like if you had like. You know, if people watch Star Wars or seen the movie Star Wars, if you had a, you had another movie, you know, when it came out another movie, people are going to see it just because of the name. Star Trek is you're going to watch Star Trek because it's Star Trek. I, I, I was going to say, I mean, you can throw you know the Walking Dead on a show like Fear the Walking exactly. Dead and have Fear a the Walking Dead. You're going to watch season. People are going to turn gonna in. And... Give it a chance. You know, I think they uh, reopened for the fourth season, right? They did, okay. and and the reason why. Is because the ratings from season the second half of season two jumped up so much mm-hmm. that they they convinced uh, most of the cast to come back for season four. So they you know the the show is on the upswing. So you know, and what makes it even more on the upswing, which you know Jay and I watched the trailer. I know we're, we're extending the show a little bit here. Jay and I both agreed that that trailer for season three was was kind of catchy, man. I, I really, I, I really forward to it. it, you know, not that yeah. I have to 
be disaster. Like I'm, I'm actually excited to see what's gonna go on. I do like some of the characters, um, but we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that when we get our uh, special there at, at the beginning of the June slash end of May. I'm not sure what day that's actually gonna fall out on. I think it's the end of May. Uh, but yeah, so season four. Yep, and we're gonna see it. Um, we have a special guest. Uh, Jay, I'm not gonna tell you. We're gonna have a, might have a special guest. Uh, Jay, you know him. Um, at the end of May, we might have a, a special guest. Uh, not gonna promise anything. But he may, he may be, he may be here. Um, we'll have to talk about maybe scheduling the show, maybe a day or two earlier, so the special guest can can be on. Um, sure. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, great show. I'm glad to be back. I know Jay's glad to be back. We're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna push you guys. Check out the website, as I always say, as Jay always says. Um, lots of stuff on there. Uh, definitely check out the track, the music, the music track list, mm-hmm. so you know what we're talking about by the songs. Um, keep looking over here because this, I'm getting text messages um, about the show. Uh, they don't see it live, um, and that's cool. Uh, you will see it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna play around with that because right now uh, our quality has, has jumped up in the past, uh, so we're in the streaming live at a much reduced quality and only get a couple of viewers. We're gonna try to do it this way, get a higher quality product out there for you guys and put up on YouTube, which uh, most of you is currently being driven from. Yep. Uh, so, so that's it. You know, I'm just reading text messages because people who have gone on Twitch before have said uh, um, they haven't seen the episodes live. We did not do. The last, I mean, obviously you're going to see this um, tomorrow, which will be uh, April 27th. Um, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see me talking about this tomorrow. It's kind of weird. Um, I read your text tonight. So you, you, we didn't do it live. We did it local. Um, like I said, more viewers, more technology comes our way. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're still going to give you a show. So I read your text messages. I understand. I told you a certain time. <laughs> we'll be back next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll shoot for this live streaming again. Uh, yeah. So we just had the, the the demand for it, you know. Yeah. Perfect. So. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for sticking with us for the little break there, and uh, we'll get to you guys uh, next week with the second half of season four. James, anything else before we cut it off? Uh, no, I just like I said, we're good. That that last question was like a segue because I know there's gonna be a couple more episodes. We're gonna we're gonna make this we're gonna make fun of Jay a little bit here. We're gonna get Jay to get pissed <laughs> off. <here. That's> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, thanks for the questions, guys. We were yeah, we do appreciate them. That's awesome. Uh, stay tuned. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, guys. <laughs>